And welcome back to Late Night Lately, the late, late night show, show uh, podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. That's how I'm your host, Chad White. I don't think I did. I'm your host, Chad White. Episode 29. Hey, let's get into some jokes because I got some jokes for you. Uh, as of last week, Trump, or this week rather, Trump is now a convicted felon after receiving, uh, being being told that he's guilty uh, on uh, 34 counts uh, of, uh, of uh, from his hush money trial, none of which were the count of him taking a cookie from the cookie jar. <laughs> Trump is also doing, former President Trump is doing background checks on possible vice presidential presidential candidates including Elise Stefanik and Tim Scott and if he keeps poking around he might realize that Tim Scott is black Steve Bannon has been has been ordered to prison in July to serve a four-month sentence for contempt charges from Congress and I'm sure Batman is keeping tabs on him as the penguin will finally be brought to justice (laughs) my penguin laugh Uh, I you know I when I was writing that joke I was thinking I should save that for Rudy but also I can reuse it for Rudy too and finally, Pat Sajak is retiring from Wheel of Fortune tonight after 41 years. He's only to be replaced by as host by the wheel itself because it's finally confident enough to spin on its own. That's all the jokes I have for you. Welcome back to Late Night Lately. Late Night is we're now in the throes of the warmer months. It's not summer yet, but it's basically summer. And we are seeing things change. Uh, apparently, it's Summer Game Fest right now as well. I didn't know that. Interesting. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. But we're seeing things change. Uh, we uh, for we're we're in the groove of things for the Daily Show. Everyone seems to be very fun uh, and funny. They've they've gotten you know they're they're doing what they can with uh, uh, John Stewart and Ronnie Chang or um, uh, Michael Costa, Desi Lighting. People are getting their chance to host, and it just seems like it's natural at this point. Which which I know that obviously we're gonna have to uh, find a way to find a host and to do the show the right way, but. There is no right way for for late night anymore. I mean, there's everybody. Everybody's got their own different things, you know. So, uh, I wonder. I wonder. Is this going to become natural? One, it feels natural now, but is it going to be something that people are going to continue wanting, especially going into the fall time? But the Daily Show is great. I'm enjoying myself as I watch it, and I, I think everybody is uh, excellent. On the show, that one loser in the bunch. I do. I do hope people pay more attention to the Ronnie Changs, the Jordan Kleppers, and stuff like that because they're doing. Because you know, this week Ronnie Chang is doing a, a fantastic job, and they brought back Sports War between him and and uh, Jordan Klepper, and I just I think that's such a funny segment. And they've also been uploading on the times that they've been off. They're all, they've also uh, the Daily Show team has also done a great job of uploading old clips of John Stewart's reign. I just wish that they would do it more so. But we'll talk about old clips in a second because uh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned. Nah, I'll just do it now. Um, the uh, last week tonight, let me find the tab. Last week tonight, they've been off for uh, two weeks and they uploaded. All of season two. And it's been great to see that. I think I did talk about this. But now uh, uh, Stewart's show, Stewart, Oliver's show is back. And it, it's, in, it's it's very funny to think that when this show started, if you look at any one of those season two episodes, besides the main story, they used to do like maybe 10 minutes up top with smaller stories. And then they would jump into the main story. But now... It feels like there's so much information for the main story that they just kind of roll right. They 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 breeze right past smaller stuff and then they roll right into the main story, which is something I just noticed. Fallon had a good week too with people like Cola Squ- uh, Scola, Ariana Grande, Matt Smith, uh, Marlon Wayans, and Jessica Alba. It's uh, it, I I I sat there. Uh, I saw I was watching the uh, the monologue for the Ariana Grande episode, and I was and I was thinking, 
why is Ariana back? Because it feels like she was just there. I didn't watch the interview. <laughs> I don't feel like it. But it truly feels like she was just there. Or maybe it's because I was looking at clips of her in the recent weeks. Yeah. Colbert had a, uh, a a big week as well. I think they all just had a big week. It doesn't really matter. But people like John Bon Jovi, Tick Notaro, John, uh, Bon Jovi's got a new album out. Did not listen to it. Alicia Keys. I need people to have more, not just musical guests, um, but like comedians and also like musicals. I like it when uh, Late Night with Seth Meyers is musical. Speaking of Late Night with Seth Meyers, uh, we're back with another episode of Corrections, which I love. But Amy Poehler came by. Sandra O. Oh. We had Retta. And he also had Back in My Day, which is one of my uh, favorite bits. I'm just breezing right through these. Will I link anything? Who knows? Kimmel came back in the middle of the holiday week, which was very strange. Uh, Memorial Day holiday week. Uh when everybody else is off, he came back on like that Thursday or Wednesday, rather. And then uh, after midnight, had a lot of return guests in the form of I believe Sashir Zameda has been there before, but I definitely know Blair Saki Saki has been there before as well. I I hope they continue to reuse people, but I also hope that they bring in people who were previously on at midnight as well. So, but that's unfortunately a lot of older comedians who I don't know if they're not as big as somebody like a John Ross Bowie, who is technically an older, not not old as an old old, but like older comedian. But still, anyway, uh, anyway, I want to get to this uh, one topic. Oh God, I should not have linked an Apple Podcast link. Please don't start playing. Okay, Kara Swisher's on podcast which is her one-on-one conversation show, typically one-on-one, uh, that she hosts thanks to, I believe, Vox Media. She had on uh, Bill Maher, who is, as you would know, a late-night host on HBO. His show in the, in the past couple of months has been brought over to CNN proper for Saturday night airings, which is, uh, I believe it airs at 8 p.m. on Saturday nights. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but... And also, I've never seen it, but it's edited, (laughs) I think. And and that's what you see with the show. Um, I'm sorry, I just I really got I was distracted trying to close out the podcast app on Mac because it turns out I've never opened that app. (laughs) Because why? I have Pocket Cast. Kara sat down with Bill uh, in his in his podcast recording place, which is in his home studio. Uh, to talk about his book, Gaza, Childhood Politics, and Cancel Culture. One thing to note, I'm not I'm not somebody who watches Bill Maher. And I'm not I'm not so I'm not really a, a an enjoyer of his comedy. There was a point in time, which I will not front about, there was a point in time when I just got an HBO and I, and and I felt you know, quote unquote, smarter for listening to, or excuse me, not listening, but watching that show because it, because you know, it was it was, it was before a time, like uh, I was on Reddit, I'd ever read Reddit or read newspapers or really just done anything outside of what is perceived to be smart, in quotes, quote unquote. And I, you know, I watched him. And I was like, "Whoa, this guy's got some. He's a he's a radical thinker." And then, you know, you you read more, or you get different viewpoints, and you go, "Oh, this guy's this guy's kind of a dick." <laughs> so all I have to say is, I recognize Bill Maher. I know who he is. I don't fully agree with him. I do think sometimes he says some stuff that's funny, and it, and, and but a lot of his ideas are definitely. Not something I agree with. Uh, although, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this: I am not a fan of his. I'm not a fan of Joe Rogan's. But as, but we, I think we need those voices in order to counterbalance all the stuff that we're hearing from everybody else. So, 
be, even if you're they're crazy and you don't agree with them, boy howdy, we need we need them so that we can have some type of discourse. But again, I definitely don't agree with either Bill Barr or Joe Rogan. Although I will say this, Bill Maher does his bookers do get people that I and I typically would enjoy in other contexts. So they will get he he will get a Kara Swisher or a Scott Galloway or uh you know a, a a Chris Rock or you know somebody promoting something. And then they'll also get you know like a Tom Cotton. You know like dude, come on. We don't need we don't need this person on here. But Kara sat down with him to talk about all that stuff. And it's, you know, it's uh, Bill. Bill's a guy who if you when 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 he's when he's in this when he's in a conversation, a one on one conversation, uh, he can really take up most of the air in the room. And I mean, he, well, he'll do that for any conversation, but he can take up most of the air in the room and, uh, and but still have a, 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 a conversation with this person. And seem kind of salient in the end. Um, again, but then again, you know, when he's talking to groups of people, when he's leading his show, he it, it, he's like puffing his chest out like a lowland gorilla and saying, "I'm in charge. Whatever you're saying is wrong. I don't agree with you." But when you get him in these in this kind of mellow state, then if, if it seems it's a lot better, I will never listen to his podcast. Uh, but I did watch clips of him talking to Bill Maher. Uh, not Bill Maher, to Bill Burr. And uh, Burr kind of was setting him straight. and, and that, But that's what Bill Burr does. He, he'll, he, he, he cuts you down to the core. He uses a scalpel, and then he goes in there with a the machete to clean everything up. <laughs> he goes in there with a the scalpel, and he kind of slices over at your heart, and he's like, all right, time to get the bigger knife, and he cuts open. And that was to watch clips of that. Again, I've never seen, I will never watch his podcast. But to watch clips of that, felt so good to see because somebody needs to cut Bill Maher down to size. And the same thing can be said uh, when watching, uh, I watched uh, Tim Heidecker on his podcast, Office Hours, I believe. Um, also, he he saw that Bill Maher had talked to Jeff Ross and Jeff Ross looks so defeated, so sad and just so defeated that he was talking to Bill Maher and that Bill Maher was talking you know, down to him or over talking him and everything. And, uh, I, if you, if you're, if you're interested at all in any of that, go watch Tim Heidecker office hours, he and his crew just decimate that, that episode of the podcast. It's so funny. And then they come back a couple of weeks later with Kyle Mooney and recreate, Oh no, uh, with uh, Fred Armisen and recreate that podcast. And it was just, it's such a funny idea. It's so funny. It just works. But Kara, uh, she, like Bill Burr, is able to use a scalpel and go in there and really just dig into the, without 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 being uh, Bill Burr, without having Bill Burr's, you know, wit of uh, jokey wit and being able to be funny and, and knock him down to size. But Kara was able to go in there and just question and follow up question with Bill Maher on certain things. And, uh, and it's, it's good. To, it's good to see. She talked to him about his book. She talked to him about Gaza and everything. I'm looking at a, a transcript, just a Google, um, uh, uh, on with Kara Swisher transcript, but it's, you know, again, it just, it feels as though there are moments where Bill Maher is able to be somebody who doesn't seem like they're better than the other person. It doesn't seem like they're trying to portray themselves in that way. And when he gets to that point, yes, then then maybe he can be an agreeable person and be fun and be funny. But I mean there like I don't want to see this guy roll, you know, roll a blunt on his podcast and then because that's what he does. <laughs> and and then and then try to talk philosophy and try to be a, a, a you know one of these you know, older white philosophers that people worship online. Oh, God. Come on. And now I'm over here being unprofessional. This microphone is just acting crazy. He, it's just, it's, 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 
it's very it's very hard to convey that uh, for him to convey at least it seems that there's there's more to him than I'm the guy who is saying this this cool hardcore radical stuff and I'm talking down to the to the liberals but I'm also talking down to the conservatives or rather I'm talking down to the conservatives but I'm also talking down to the liberals and God doesn't exist <laughs> and you're wrong and there's going to be a civil war man but again we need voices like his in order to have, you know, conversations along, along these lines. Now, does that does that mean that we need people like Greg Gutfeld to host a Fox News show, a late night show? No. But they exist. It's not part of the discourse because they've put themselves in an arena where the people who would usually watch late night shows aren't falling over to that side. Now, it's not to say that Colbert and uh, 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 Myers and Fallon and and all the other late-night hosts, that their audiences ten, tend to lean one way, which might be true. Uh, however... People who typically watch that stuff, or even alt comedy, they're not going to be the ones going, January 6th was real, and we should do it again. (laughs) And women don't need to have, or women need to have all the babies, and don't need to have abortions or stuff, like, things like that. Gutfeld and Bill Maher, and I hate to put those two together, because I like Bill Maher, and I dislike like compared to how much I dislike Gutfeld. I like Bill Maher compared to how much I dislike that guy, uh, Gutfeld guy. Um, these shows are these shows. These shows are po- political compared to, yes. While while Fallon and Kimmel's and and everybody else's shows, they do have politics in them. They're they're flavored with politics. Politics isn't the main component. It's not the main base. It's not the rice. It's the it's the chicken. It's the protein. Whereas I think for the Daily Show, I would definitely, you know, I'll put the Daily Show with, uh, uh, again, I've never seen Gutfeld, but with Gutfeld and uh, Bill Maher's show. And that's, and I feel like that's the way you do a late night show that deals with politics right. The Daily Show is the way you do it. Because it handles news and handles politics in a much better sense than any late night show could. But for Bill Maher, that's more of a, a, a political chat show that happens to, if you ask Bill, that happens to be funny. <laughs> and for Gutfeld, it's on a news network. His show's on a news network. So, yeah, I mean, I guess they would say it's a, a funny news panel show. But The Daily Show is doing it right, and it has been doing it right for decades. From the Kilbourne era all the way up to the hostless era. There's no real conclusion there. I just wanted to mention that Bill Maher was on Kara Swisher's podcast. And that his voice is as valid as Colbert's and everyone else's. Listen, if you like what you heard here, head to website website. C- pluscomedy.com where uh, I've got uh, other conversations on other podcasts talking to famous people. You can follow us on, excuse me, no. If you want to listen to other podcasts, you can check out the Constitutionals podcast, which is the entertainment business news podcast, as well as LinkedIn Logs, which is the jobs podcast. And I was about to hit the LinkedIn Logs theme song. You can uh, find videos for that show, for those shows on youtube.com slash cpluscomedy. And again, cpluscomedy.com to find everything we've ever done. Uh, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at cpluscomedy. Follow me on those platforms at Chad Black White. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.